we'll sort of construct the agenda on the fly, which we always sort of do anyway, but it's going to be a little bit more on the fly this week than usual. Um, so, and then we also have events. So we've got good news on the KubeCon front. Um, Yeah, we also have a good news on ONS EU front. Ah, not for this project, I guess. Okay, sorry. No, that, that's fine. I mean, I, I would love to see uh, feedback from folks about the ONS EU experience. Very good. I'm at Kyle. Yep. By the way, uh, for, for folks who just let me stick in the let me try and stick in the chat if I can find the chat. I do not seem to have access to a chat in, in Zoom anymore. Uh, the link to the meeting minutes, and let me actually bring up and share the meeting minutes really quickly. Um, and we'll just walk through them live. One second while I clear things up on my Chrome browser. Um, traditionally speaking, we, will, we as a community will tend to edit the meeting minutes live anyway. So. Let me get the share going. I see share. Google Chrome, there we go. Awesome. Can everyone see the Google Chrome? Yes. Cool. So the good news is we do have some network service mesh tasks that are happening at KubeCon. Let me get them linked in here real quick. Um, the CFP closed for KubeCon, correct? Right, right. But we do have two talks for KubeCon um, on network service mesh on the schedule. Oh, good. And there we go. So awesome. So let me go ahead and get the links to those going. So thanks, folks, for going ahead and uh, putting yourself onto the um, attendees list. That helps a lot. Uh, people are also often wondering, oh, hey, who all is involved in this? And that's a good way for them to see. Um, so we wanted to also add to the agenda, I think, Machik, you wanted to add an item on about the BNF CNF uh, testing and benchmarking stuff. I think that was one of the ones we didn't quite get to. That was actually not just me, but also Mikael, who is now here. Yes. So this is I, correct. I think I just heard Michael's, uh, Michael's uh, voice, so. I, I am here. <laughs> he does seem to be. Uh, Michael or Mikael, how do you pronounce your name? You're Swedish, so it's Mikael, correct? I'm Danish, so yes, the first one, uh, it's Mikael. Uh, Danish, okay, Mikael. Yeah, so it's not Michael, Mike. it's Mikael. Okay, you thank can you. call me Michael or Mike, I don't mind. <laughs> no, I prefer to go native, so I'm sure, going to stick sure. to Mikael, thank you. All right. Yeah, uh, and, and, and thank you for bringing that up, Machik. I do try and get people's names right, and I'm right, and I'm not usually very good at it. So I'm glad that you took the time to figure that out. So Mikal, excellent, cool. So we're a little bit light this week because I think a bunch of people are still at or in, or in transit from um, ONS Europe. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Is there anything else that folks would like to see in the agenda that we don't have here currently? Cool. 
if you don't mind, I'd like to put the action item review kind of at the end, because uh, I think some of the more important things have bubbled up to the top a bit in, in getting their own uh, items here. Is that fine with everyone? Sure. Hey, yeah, the, uh, the only only thing I have, sorry, I need to drop off at uh, half past. So uh, if you could cover the lab stuff or the CMA VNF stuff before then, I would appreciate. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Ed, uh, Ed, real quick, uh, we've done some very brief arm waving about a possible demo uh, at KubeCon, an NSM demo of some sort, format. Yep. Good point to add to the KubeCon Seattle discussion. Um, so anything else that folks feel we need to add to the agenda? By the way, folks should feel free to not only add items to the agenda live in the doc, uh, but also to help in the process of taking notes. It is really useful if you do that. Cool. So, <clears throat> so getting down to events. So I know there was a bunch of network service mesh stuff that was going on this week at ONSEU. Uh, Maciek, do you want to comment on any of that or? Uh, well, I, uh, um, uh, Giles and me were there um, uh, when uh, Kyle and uh, what's going on after all. Tom, um, you're, you're a little bit of background noise there, so if you could mute. There we go. Yeah. So, so um, uh, Frederick and um, and Kyle presented an SM. I've been to one uh, one of the talk. They were doing the dialogue with uh, the uh, with your Spider Man and some of the slides. I think it went very well. Uh, there was a, a lot of interaction with the room and uh, and uh, and huge amount of interest. Uh, I personally enjoyed it and was glued to the to the presenters and uh, and the screened content. So I like that. I also know that uh, uh, Frederick and uh, Carl run some uh, site uh, workshops, but I, I don't know, I, I don't have any feedback because I didn't attend those. I did attend the happy hour uh, together with Giles and we had uh, some uh, good uh, fun uh, there. So that's my feedback. I don't know, Giles, do you have any, any more to add from your experience on NSM? No, I think at it was good. Yeah. yeah, I think it was good. I mean, I think, yeah, we probably want to, um, so Ed, um, we were probably going to run those same slides when we do the thing in Paris in a few weeks. Um, seems like everybody loves that. Loves your animated spider. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it, that, 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 that story has been well received. Um, it, it is, it is kind of a crazy impressive number of slides, but they go very, very fast because they aren't actually. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, people tend to identify with the protagonist and that's always a sign of, of good literature. Um, cool, awesome. So I'm glad that that went well and hopefully we'll hear a little bit more when, when Kyle and Frederick make it back. So, and then in terms of events we have coming up, the next big one is KubeCon Seattle, which is December 10th through the 13th. Um, I think it's technically the 11th through the 13th, but there are some, events that are happening as, as co-located events on the town that are probably cool to go to as well. Um, so at KubeCon Seattle, we do have two network service mesh talks that have, that have been put on the schedule. One is the intro to network service mesh, and the other is the network service mesh deep dive. So you know, if you guys could, you know, we would love to see you at those talks. We would also love it if you could promote those talks to other people who might be interested in network service mesh. I think that would be good. Um, and then I think we've got Chris Metz sort of pointing out that we need to come up with an NS network service mesh demo and suggesting we do things around, you know, podcasts and blogs leading up to KubeCon as well, which I think is, is a good set of suggestions. So I guess part of my question to the room would be, um, what do we think as a community that we would like to be able to demo at KubeCon um, in terms of network service mesh? Uh, actually, are you sure this is the right question to ask, uh, Ed? I'm open to this not being the right question. Shouldn't, shouldn't the question be, what do we expect to be working? Um, I don't think it does make sense to hack uh, some throwaway code for just the demo. Um, talking to Frederick and Kyle, you know, they're making, they, 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 were, they were updating that, you know, the, pro, the steady progress is being made. But I think the question should be really, what is expected to be working. And based on that, uh, work out the demo scenario per Chris's request. That would be at least my, my suggestion. But, yeah, that's, um, that's an excellent suggestion. I tend to think about things in terms of priorities. 
um, because my experience has been when, so when you, when you set definitive goals saying we will do a, you know, X by Y date, um, you tend to not do more than X. Uh, but when you set a list of priorities, these are the priority list of things we're working on and we need to at least get X working by Y date. Um, then then you know, you're much more likely to overshoot your goals. So I guess maybe the, the right question is, what are the priority of things that we would like to show um, at Network Service Mesh? And then we can sort of see what we can actually do to get from here to there. Does that make more sense? Hey, yeah, just prefacing uh, those remarks. Or, um, so I guess this demo would be some sort of portfolio of material that we'd want to expose to the community. So, um, Machik, to your point, uh, even if it is a hack, um, there could be at least some things we show, you know, existing in the cluster, like, um, uh, you know, the NSM uh, agent, um, you know, whatever sort of... Uh, calls might be established uh, or calls set up to uh, be able to program the cross connect. So um, I think that contributes to uh, not only, you know, the KubeCon presentations, uh, the website, but just sort of gives um, the audience, um, you know, something else to look at and at least picture in their minds. And, you know, walking away, we want them to think that, you know, hey, networking is happening again. It's happening in the cloud. This is a really cool solution. Yeah, I, I, I think the tagline I used at OSS was network service mesh, making networking sexy again, um, <laughs> which is a good aspirational goal. But yeah, we got we got to work with some some element of running code. So um, I, I think we would need to quickly determine what we might have working by then or before then so that we could start to build this thing. So, so maybe what we should do is, is we, we sort of put the stake on that. We should think about this and revisit this uh, next week and see what conclusions we've sort of come to as a group between now and then. Um, we got a lot of the community that's currently out this week. Um, before you leave this topic, before uh, Ed, I submitted, there's also a FIDO day at Kubicon. I don't know whether it'll be accepted or not, but I submitted a, something to the FIDO about constructing a simple example, uh, a layer two connection only using uh, a network service mesh. Of course, some of the, some of the work that's going on right now is sort of in defining the uh, NSM data plane uh, protocol might be important for that because uh, that seems to be the mechanism that uh, we're, we're converging on. Uh, but that I hope to have some code actually written, and uh, you know um, I'm uh, uh, that that's demonstrable at least in an isolated environment. Very cool, very cool. So um, so cool. So let, let's 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 mold some of this stuff on the what we want to bring at KubeCon, and we'll talk about it a little next week, and we can talk about it in the intervening time. Everybody okay with moving on to the sort of VNF, CNF testing and benchmarking? Cool, uh, Mikhail, Machek, you guys are up. All right, so uh, Mikhail, we exchanged some, uh, some emails um, on where things are. Uh, things are. I understand that um, uh, you guys are using uh, pocket.net uh, or something similar. The uh, the guys who are hiring the uh, or renting the physical uh, service. I keep forgetting the, the their domain name. Uh, and yeah. Taylor Watson and Lucina briefed me on where you are. We we've been actually chatting every day uh, when in Amsterdam. And uh, I understand you got the uh, VMs and uh, and uh, containers working, uh, but I um, they were. They were very, they didn't know you know whether you are actually able to run any data plane tests yet. So that oh, was so, my main so question. We have been running some basic data plane tests so far, mm -hmm. um, using using NAV bench which connects to T Rex. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've pretty much so far I've been focusing on sixty four byte package just to try and make sure we don't don't bottleneck on the the network interfaces since I guess we only have. 10 gig connections available. Mm -hmm. um, That's a, yeah, I understand so, that. So what we've done is we've scaled down the number of, of cores being used for the VMs and, and, and containers to pretty much the minimum that we can, we can, we can run with. 
Okay, and what sort of rates are you getting? Are they comparable with what we are measuring um, in FDA? And, and, and yes, if you get a server at PEC and you get one that has. Oh, just. A... You're, you're yeah, breaking okay. up the whole thing. We're, we're losing you a bit. So, do you have any numbers to share? Any any results? Uh, anything at all? Uh, yes, uh, you can hear me now. I think my connection yeah. just went haywire. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so we have the numbers, and I guess for, for just a single chain, I guess we're reaching 8.34 million packets per second for the VM and for the, uh, or no, let me get the actual numbers because I guess we scaled it down a bit, so it might be less. By, uh, by, by single chain here, you're talking uh, PVP, correct? Yes, yes. And this is... Uh, uh, a V switch is uh, is uh, is what is VPP or obviously VDK? VPP. V switch is VPP, and then VM is running test PMD or what? Also VPP. Also VPP. Okay, and uh, it's a um, vhost user vertio for VM. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm just updating the notes uh, as sure. I. Okay. Uh, Okay, and you also got the same for container? Yeah, yes, the only difference is we're using MIF to, to uh, interface. Sure, and uh, so what are the numbers you're observing? You said 8.3 million PPS? Um, let me get the actual most recent ones I have available. Just a second, I should have them open. And what is the packet loss ratio that you are measuring it at? Um, I'm using RSS measurements. Or MRR measurement, sorry. Um, MRR, MRR is defined um, by CISIT? Uh, I'm not sure if it's CISIT. I imagine there might be a... What do you mean by MRR? Is it maximum, maximum receive rate? Yes. That is CISIT. Nobody else defined the term. We'll be defining oh. it in the <laughs> IT of draft. <laughs> yeah, I think I heard it from, from Ed at some point. So that might have been why, uh, how I that's got to a, it. That's okay. That's okay. All right. Uh, That's for the VNF, correct? That's for both of them. Um, but I guess I guess I'm not even sure if I'm I'm compliant to it completely, to be honest. Um, so what what I'm doing right now is we're just pushing the the line rate, and then then I've done measurements at lower rates as well. <clears throat> just yeah, because uh, as you as you probably know, uh, MRR is very forgiving for the computer because we're running the computer at the. Uh, basically, we don't we don't care about PLR uh, packet loss rate. So yeah, it it is good indicative measure. However, for measuring memory uh, interface efficiency, we probably would like to have uh, like uh, you know zero packet loss. Yeah. Or or some tolerance. So we should measure both. That's what we're doing in uh, in the um, uh, in the FDIO. But yeah. people, people don't really care about MRR. It's more of our, the uh, developers. Uh, I know, but it, it, it's yeah. also just to get some some yes, yes, numbers. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Uh, well, do you know what is the computer you're running it on? Uh, one of the uh, the guys listed on this packet.net. Is it uh, the Skylake Gold that they're listing as available or something else? Yes, it's a Gold 5120. 5120. And this is, you're running it in... Uh, in uh, um, hyper threading, and you do you yes. run two sibling threads? Okay. Yes. Uh, which NICs? Uh, Mellanox Connect X fours, and we oh. only have one port available since the other port is used for uh, external um, connectivity. Connect X fours, you said. Yes. Yes. Okay. Are they going for the switch, right? I uh, I would imagine so. Yeah, they do. Okay, so you got 8.3 Mpps for VM. What about container? Actually, I guess just to get the correct numbers, I guess it's 8.13 million packets per second for VNF. 8.13, and mm -hmm. for v v for container? 12.24. 12.24. Okay, all right. And uh, also MRR, yes. Yes. And this is the single chain um, PCP. Yes. Okay. Okay. What's the clock for the uh, for the CPU? Um, let me just get it. Two point two. Mm -hmm. And you have a turbo bus disabled and shit like that. Yes. 
Um, I'm actually not sure. No, it looks like Turbo Boost is actually enabled on here. Ah, uh, then it's bullshit. Then, then we don't know. <laughs> you know how it works, right? At least I see it running at 2.8 now, so, so uh, some, no, something has gone. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. So, uh, uh, good news is uh, you've got to the point where you're making measurements. You have a T-Rex script, you're running an heavy bench. Uh, so, this is just now tuning, right? Uh, yeah. And I've actually uh, already been doing doing a bit of that one just to, to get the highest possible numbers given given like the setup that we have. Per, per, perfect. So so actually Turbo Boson is a good number because we actually did report the reports Turbo Boson result in Copenhagen EU and we have provided another read with Giles on Wednesday in Amsterdam. Um, as you can see, hopefully this, the slides got posted. We sent them the slides uh, earlier a few hours ago. Yeah. So this is this is this is this is cool. Uh, we just need to start moving on. So, how do we? Uh, shall we have a, a breakout session maybe next week uh, to to walk through the for the detail? I know that Tyler was very interested to make progress. Yeah, we as, can uh, we can definitely as, definitely. Yeah, Dan 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 Con also wants uh, <coughs> he's paying attention because he wants to show some of it in his keynote. Yeah. So well, I guess and, and I can. Agree. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I just I can I can add over the last couple of days as well. I actually got the the multi-chain CNF working as well. So now I I guess I can use six CNFs in chain on Numa Zero. Six CNFs in chain, but are you doing horizontal memifs or for the V switch? Horizontal. Horizontal. That's gonna be uh, the biggest impact. No, 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 never mind. Vertical. Vertical. No. It is. It depends what you mean by horizontal or vertical in this case. By, kind of uh, by, by horizontal, I mean where the two containers talk to each other versus, yes. talking, versus instead of talking for the switch. They talk to each other. Okay, so how many do you have? Uh, up to six. Single chain. So you say P, C, 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 D. <laughs> yeah. Yes? Uh, or we can call it um, from one to six. Yes. Yeah. Or I guess we have the one. So so what what this does is just two to six. And since I have a separate script for doing this. Or in fact, I think the proper notation, if we use regex, is like this. So you basically have a single chain PC, and then you have one times uh, times as many. So that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So what numbers are you seeing then, Michael? Uh, let me just find them. So looking at let's say a million packets per second at 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 the the ten gig um, connection, I guess it it starts out with two CNFs at eleven point five, then eleven point two, then nine point ninety four, then nine point ninety nine, then nine point eighty four. So there is a bit of drop and a bit of variation, but it's nine ninety four. What was the next one? Uh, nine ninety eight. Now nine ninety nine actually ten, if you round it. Nine ninety nine. What's the next one? Uh, nine eighty-four. And the next one? Uh oh, uh, I'm I'm ahead of you, I guess. So the first one was eleven fifty-one, then eleven twenty-six. Yep, nine ninety-nine, nine eighty-four. Uh no, then the third one is nine ninety-four, then nine ninety-nine, and then nine eighty-four. Okay, 1126, 999, 994. Let me see if I can post them in chat. That might be easier. <laughs> well, if you, are, if you are watching what I'm typing. Um, yeah, but I only have like the one screen, so I'm kind of jumping between everything. I posted the numbers now in the chat. Yeah. So do you, do you have numbers for uh, the multi-chain VNF as well? No, I'm, I'm just working on setting that one up. Since the way we're doing it right now, there is a bit of hacking going on to get this to work in through Vagrant. So I'm, I'm just trying to find a way to, to get these up and running as well. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I'm wondering why you see a drop. Yeah, that that's kind of surprises me as well. Uh, this is based on... I done five iterations of each run. And this is also MRR in every case, yes? Yes, I have numbers for lower speeds as well. So if anything, it might be that once once we get to this, once we start having a lot of drops, then, then it impacts the performance. So it- No, 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 it's not that. I know what it is. I would, let's take it to flight. Sure, sure. It's a configuration. Oh. 
So it, it sounds like there is a desire to put together a, a breakout in the next week uh, for folks to see yep. this. Um, yep. So. Uh, My, Michael, uh, quick because sorry, quick question because I need to drop off. Uh, it yeah. Does Monday work for you? What time zone are you in? Uh, I'm sitting in Arizona, so that is Arizona is fine. It's currently yeah. you are on Pacific, so uh, it's eight eight thirty here a.m. Yeah, so you're on currently on Pacific until they move to the winter time. And yeah, they don't they don't even change here. I guess Arizona. I know, I know that you don't. Um, <laughs> you don't move to see very wise. Everybody else does, which is stupid. Yes. Uh, I'll propose something on Monday morning your time. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thank right. you. Well, thank you, guys. That, that this has actually been really helpful. This is going to be very key for a lot of folks who are looking at developing, at adopting uh, network service mesh for cloud native NFE. And so these kinds of compelling reasons are, are going to be really, really helpful as we move forward. Yeah, uh, I need to do both. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick. I see you made it. Excellent. Frederick, are you here? Yes, uh, multiple mute buttons. Hello. <laughs> All the mute buttons are belonging to you. Um, so real quick, do, do you want to give us a quick uh, readout on the ONSCU experience? Sure. So I ended up uh, giving a few, uh, a few talks on it uh, in different venues. Uh, I ended up having a conversation with some of the people from uh, from Ericsson and Lumina over at the uh, DDF. Uh, they're both uh, they're both interested in in helping out. And this um, was the, I think uh, this was the Open Daylight DDF. Yeah, that, that's correct. Okay, and cool. I, that was right before ONS. And so uh, Anil has said that in the next few days, so he's probably traveling right now, but uh, he said that in the next. Uh, few days he was going to reach out and he said he wants to start contributing code to the project. So for me, that, that's, a, that's a huge win. Cool. Um, let's see. One of the things that I pitched to the ODL team who's focusing on the COE project is that the uh, team end up uh, building out not, not only the COE uh, CMI plugin itself, but that they also focus on two other two other things. Number one is providing a library written in Go, which is sort of like VPP agent that you can uh, how you can control VPP with it uh, and write something similar so that you can do that with, uh, with the ODL side. But uh, the more important one is uh, that they also create some form of a of uh, either an, a network service endpoint that would use this library or to create some form of ENSM that uh, that they could then use to lift various features from ODL. So I've gotten them to start thinking about what such a thing will look like. Uh, one of the things that if, if you get asked about this later on, one of the things that I cautioned them on was do not mix the CNI stuff and the NSM stuff together because there was some, oh, we can, we can use uh, you know, we can merge them all into one like super project and so on. And it's, you know, so it's trying to dissuade them. Modularity is good. Yeah. Um, so the actual sessions themselves. So uh, Kyle and I, we ended up giving a uh, session on the network service mesh. We got a really good turnout. Um, I feel bad for some of the other sessions because they were probably empty because of us. Um, <laughs> how, how do we have any estimate of the headcount for the turnout or? Um, I didn't take an estimate of it, so maybe someone else who was on the call had the better, because I was more focused on giving the talk than I was counting people, so. Fair, totally fair. Um, I ended up uh, having uh, conversations as well with uh, uh, some of the, with some of the uh, people, actually, with the person from Intel, uh, and I think it was uh, Ivan Coughlin, and so we're going to we're going to have discussions on uh, on how we can better position. Like, it, what he wants is he wants guidance on like when should you use network service mesh, you know, when when should when should you pull Multis or that kind of stuff. So I'll help him write that uh, that guidance up. So because one of the things that's happening that I want to be very careful with is that uh, there's a lot of misconceptions as to where network service mesh is. And so uh, some of the people in uh, the Multis community and so on uh, are a little bit apprehensive of, uh, of our project. And so uh, rather than 
let things continue on and just you know let it evolve you know the two of us are going to work to try to work out like you know where, where the best place in terms of positioning is so that people can be more confident in uh, where the lines fall um let's see what else i ended up having uh no, there's something else that I'm, uh, that I'm forgetting, uh, a few things I'm probably forgetting. Uh, I ended up having a talk with uh, some of the, uh, one of the Swiss telecoms, uh, might have been Swiss telecom, uh, telecom itself. And so they're, they're interested in some of the network service mesh uh, stuff as well. So I'm going to see if I can get them to start giving us some of uh, their use cases where they think it might be useful and to help them further understand it. So I've connected with one of them through, uh, through another uh, avenue. So worst case scenario, if I can't get them onto this meeting or onto the mailing list, I'll see if I can at least pull the, uh, the requirements myself and then transcribe them with their permission to, uh, to our community. Um, yeah, there was definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of interest. Um, I, there's certainly interest on from the CNCF itself. Uh, I had a lot of trouble getting a hold of Dan, Dan Cohn, so I wasn't able to get a hold of, hold of him specifically. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can follow up with him uh, maybe in a, in a week or so now that things are, you know, people finish traveling and things start to settle down so that, uh, so that we can work out, like, what type of messaging does he want to provide or, or like, how does he want to proceed with network service mesh as well? And so one of the things that they're asking us to do, both uh, CNCF and specifically uh, the Linux Foundation Networking, that it's not part of NSM directly, but I think it's something we can help out, uh, help out a lot out on, is that we help provide guidance on what a CNF is in, in the first place. And we had spoken about this several times in the, in the past uh, several uh, several weeks and so on. So there's a continuation of that, but uh, effectively they, they want they want help in defining what it is and help in trying to trying to work with telcos to and the uh, VNF who pro providers who want to move over to CNFs and uh, if we're if we're the ones who provide that uh, that guidance and then uh, we can make sure that uh, that it's like I said independent of, of NSM but we can make sure that they don't fall into the same uh, pitfalls that we saw application developers do when they were starting to containerize their workloads when Docker groups came out. Um, if, let's see, if there's anything else I forgot, uh, I'm sure I'll think about it right after the meeting and I'll send it over an email. Cool. How, did, how did the happy hour and the unconference go? The, the happy hour didn't have as many people as I was expecting. I think one of the reasons uh, was that, uh, not because there was a lack of interest, but uh, we had, it was bad timing with the um, uh, with there was a general I guess you would say uh, uh, booth crawl and that kind of stuff that ended, that ended up going uh, later in, in the day and then when you combine that with there was no good venue that we could really find that was close to the conference center and so we ended up going to one of the hotels, but the hotels were a little bit of a walk. And so I think people were like, uh, I don't want to go on a walk. So, uh, so we still, we got some, some people who were interested in it, but numbers weren't as high as, as I was hoping. So. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I, I appreciate the detailed report. That's all sounds like very, very good news. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the number one thing that, uh, I guess the number one feedback that I kept hearing over and over again is, we have to get some form of a proof of concept out. We have to get something running and showing because right now people cannot pick our work in order to show, like people want to build proof of concepts for other things as well. And they want to pull us in, but they can't pull us in because we're not ready yet. So we have to get ready. Totally fair, cool. So um, that actually provides a nice segue into sort of uh, one of the next things that we have here, which is the arc doc in progress work. Um, so there, there's been a lot of conversation going back and forth trying to actually write down clean architecture um, for a lot of these things and particularly so we can pin down some of the APIs. Um, so the, the sort of the latest PR I've got going on this and the, the area that we're currently focusing most on is the API, um, you know, basically is the within Kubernetes. Can everyone see the share by the way? Can everyone see the share? Can anyone? Yes. See? Okay, good. Yes. Yes. 
um, so within within Kubernetes, um, there's a, a data plane between the network service manager and whatever your data plane is, and this this is basically how the network service manager asks for cross connects from whatever data player data planes are present on the system. Um, and so we've been trying to define this sort of NSM to NSM data plane API. In other words, what does the NSM say to the NSM data plane? And this has got you know, things like create cross connect, update cross connect, delete cross connect, uh, listen watch cross connects, which is a pattern which basically says, look, give me the status about the cross connects you've got. Um, and then listen watch mechanisms which we'll get to mechanisms in just a second, but mechanisms are sort of like the things you can support. Like I am a data plane that can do kernel interfaces in VXLAN, but those are the only mechanisms I support. So if you need someone to give you cross connects for MIF and SRV6, I can't help you, right? And so listen watch mechanisms allows you to send information from the data plane up to the NSM about the mechanisms. And then um, the other one that we define as a simple registration for the networks, this is the sort of way that the network service mesh data plane talks to the network service manager. And it just has a registration that sort of says, hey, I'm a data plane. This is how you phone, phone me back. And then we've been working through sort of sorting out these mechanisms as well. Uh, you know, where a mechanism is one of either a remote mechanism or a local mechanism. <clears throat> and when you look at local mechanisms, you get things like a type, and currently, we've got four types that we've identified so far, curl interfaces, MemIF, and vhost user. <clears throat> and then we've got a map that's a bunch of labels. And the way we're currently thinking is these labels could express you know, preferences or constraints or communicate the final values of a parameter. So for a curl interface, for example, uh, you might have a label name equals eth2. And so if I'm a pod coming up, you know, wanting to be connected to a network service, I might you know, say I look, you know, among my preferred list of local mechanisms, um, you know, I would prefer a kernel interface and I would prefer that it be named ETH2. And then when you get back from the data plane would be the mechanism that was actually, you know, sorted out. And then we've also got remote mechanisms to find, they sort of first get defined when we're looking at how NSMs communicate with each other. And the remote mechanisms are sort of very similar. They've got a type and a bunch of labels. Um, the kinds of things you communicate in those labels would be somewhat different. So we sort of use an example here of VXLAN, right? So you would imagine that, you know, you would have source IP, source port, dust IP, dust port, and VNI. Um, and so when one NSM sends a remote connection request to another NSM, it would specify source IP, source port, and a list of acceptable VNIs, uh, probably expresses ranges. And then when the NSM2 comes back, it would still send back the source port, dust port, it source port and IP, but it also sends the dust IP and port and the particular VNI that it picked as labels. Make sense so far to folks? Don't all speak at once. Yeah, this, uh, this makes sense to, uh, to me. Cool. And, and so the, the part of this is uh, there's a lot of conversation happening on IRC back and forth because uh, Sergey is trying to produce code and God bless him, he's chasing moving architecture, which is incredibly brave. Um, but it's also productive because he keeps sort of poking things back and saying, hey, why is this so complicated? And so things get simpler. Um, do you have any comments you want to make, Sergey? Uh, well, basically, just just one. I mean, if it's all possible, I would really, really prefer to keep uh, an SM code uh, as um, a away from being um, mechanism uh, knowledgeable. So there shouldn't be any code in the NSM for any type of mechanism. So it's just like a bridge. I would consider it as a bridge. Doesn't matter if it's a Ferrari runs over the bridge or somebody on the donkey crossing the river. I mean, I don't care. Yeah. I like that metaphor a lot. Um, so no, no, you would mention this, this idea just for the, on the IRC channel. I, I, I like the idea very much. I'm kind of mulling it over a little bit, but that would actually vastly simplify life. So um, I guess the, the key takeaway for folks here is there's a lot going on. We're, I think, relatively close to converging on a pretty simple and, and powerful uh, set of APIs. 
for NSM to the data plane and for NSM to NSM. And from there, I think, you know, development gets to be much simpler um, and more straightforward. So it should be easier to get involved. But cool. I think uh, th mm -hmm. this, is, this is not remote mechanism specific. This is remote mechanism type. So to this point, it's just power method to set up the, the channel, just the, the overlay, right? Uh, yes. How else would you, how else would you configure it? Yeah. I mean, VXLAN needs all this stuff. Yes, yeah, no, no, absolutely. What we're starting out is um, when you look at the setting up of a cross connect between some pod that wants to consume a network service and some and a network service endpoint somewhere, um, presuming that network service endpoint is not running as a pod on the same node, then you end up having to sort out the local mechanism. In other words, how do you inject the connection into the pod, which might be a kernel interface or might be, might be MIMIOF. And then you also got to sort out the remote mechanism. And that remote mechanism has to be negotiated with the network service manager that is managing the network service endpoint. And so you have to be able to express, you know, essentially as part of that, hey, this is the list of preferences that I have as NSM1 uh, for the kinds of things that would be acceptable to me as remote mechanisms. And then NSM2 has to select one of those and get it back to you. And so this, this just becomes a very simple way in the API to communicate that back and forth. No, I mean, I like, I like what you're showing and I, I get it totally. I was just uh, wondering what was the comment before about uh, NSM being abstracted and not detailing this stuff. Um, okay. Uh, Good, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, um, the NSM needs to do a selection process. And there, there, there are multiple levels where we could do the selection. First, we could do on the uh, re remote mechanism type. That's one level of the selection. And second, to look at the actual details for that specific remote mechanism selection and do some analysis. So I would, I, I, I mean, I think it would make sense to do the selection on the first level on the type of the mechanism, but leave the more detailed analysis to the data plane who actually implements it and have a way better position to, uh, to parse them and to analyze them than to do it in the NSM code. Yes, Make I, sense? I, I understand, but um, the, the low level driver, whatever it is, mechanism that will, be in charge of building the the cross connect uh, needs configuration from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And and so what what might be useful is what I, what I, what the first the first two examples is is just simply source IP and destination IP. This is something that comes from a central knowledge somewhere. I don't know. It doesn't actually come from central from a central IPAM. But I think what you're really getting at and what we should probably strive to, to move forward with here is some sequence diagrams so people can see these things in context um, because it's good to have the APIs defined. But I think sort of getting a sequence diagram of how the messages flow in context um, with the complete filling out of some of these fields would be massively helpful to make a lot of this clearer. Make sense? Okay, cool. Cool. And, and, and all right, cool. Um, anything else before we move on to other items in the agenda? Because we're, time keeps on ticking. Um, I would strongly encourage people to get involved um, in, in some of these things. Like I said, there's a lot of activity on the IRC channel. We've had a lot of really useful feedback from a bunch of folks. Um, you know, the PR is out there for comment. The PRs are being run pretty hot meaning that as they progress, they're getting updated precisely. So there's a nice place for people to go read through and add comments. Um, so, you know, this is an exciting time in the project. Uh, we would love to have more people involved in it. Cool. Um, awesome. So action item tracking. So Frederick, since you're actually here now, do you mind you're much better at this than I am? I'm happy to share the, the project board. Do you want to talk through it? Uh, the only problem is I don't have access to my computer right now, so I'm not going to be effective at that. 
I excuses, excuses. Um, <laughs> cool. So I think we probably need to go through and um, right and clean up some of these. So for example, um, if we look at the to-dos, we've got the x-factor CNFs, which is definitely something folks would like to work on. But I think things like the migrate go errors to go errors, I think that's been resolved. Is that correct, Frederick? Sorry, can you repeat it one more time? Migrate errors to go errors? Uh, yeah, that's a, an ongoing thing, but the, the majority of that has should be resolved. So we have Go, uh, Go errors installed. We have the plugin built out. Uh, part of it is that as we refactor the system, we need to go and change everything to use Go errors, to, primarily for uh, injecting the, uh, 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 the stack traces. Yeah, so it might be worth mentioning some of why Go errors is nice. Yeah, so basically what happens is that when you run Go errors, uh, instead of using the standard uh, errors, which just gives you a string, you run Go errors and it, you can inject additional information into the into the error as a set of labels. And so the stack, uh, stack traces are one such thing that we inject in. And so we end up, uh, once, once it hits the, uh, the logger, we can then serialize all the, the logger into whatever format we want, and, uh, ins but ensure that we keep that structure. So, we're, so we've set it up so that when you write to, uh, I think it was Logris, then uh, you'll have all that available, all the information and context available uh, in, your, in your logging system. So you can then filter by them or, or perform whatever analysis you want. It so this, it sounds suspicious like you're saying rather than getting a potentially cryptic string uh, with a line number attached to it, you get a potentially cryptic string with a line number attached to it and a stack trace. Correct. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so we've got the ongoing becoming a Kubernetes working group member, and that's been backburnered a little bit lately. Um, do you remember, Frederick, what the workout documentation infrastructure stuff is? Uh, I don't at the moment. Okay. Uh, and the document, how to get a privileged container? Yeah, well, we had a document of, well, I remember you, you wrote one on, no, you wrote the one on to get the uh, network namespace thing. Uh, to get a privileged container, I don't recall if that's been documented or not. Uh, yeah, we, that, that should be easy to document, though. Okay. Um, so it's just uh, finding a correct spot in Kubernetes to run, uh, to tell it to give you a privileged, uh, a privileged container. So. Yep. And then we've got the software line and hosting to identify the pod. I think that as part of the, uh, the API is getting really crisp. That, that that's going to fall out to the right place because one of the things that we've started to do in the arc doc is to get really clear about what is network service mesh in the abstract and what things are particular to network service mesh in Kubernetes. So for example, the NSM to NSM API, you know, how to network service managers communicate with each other, that is not at all particular to Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetesism shouldn't creep into that. But um, the you know, the network service client to network service manager API within Kubernetes, um, you know, that, that we can sort of look at in a much more sane way because we know that's always gonna be a Kubernetes thing. If someone is using a network service manager in a different context, they'll have their own way for network service endpoints and network service clients to communicate with them in that context. Cool. Um, so the enhanced proposal support CNF, C and CF CNF project, I think we're actually moving towards that. Michael, does it sound like we're heading towards things that would be helpful and useful to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, but again, it's a lot of the, the right now for me manual work that I guess could be abstracted to something a little, a little easier to manage. That's the hope. <laughs> uh, cool. And then uh, we had a, a really good point here made by Dunhammer last week. Uh, about separating this out somewhat by audience in terms of who we are addressing. And he started taking a swag at sort of what he saw as the audiences, you know, developers of NSM framework and APIs, developers of plugins, so that, it, that consumers of those, et cetera. And I think that's a very good point. Um, I think right now we're sort of very much in heads down mode, but as we document things, we have to keep that in mind. And then the L2 forwarding with VPP example, I think, Tom continues to work on that, right, Tom? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, I'm uh, trying to participate in this discussion of the data plane to, uh, to, to NSM 
uh, NSMD to NSM um, protocol because uh, you know that's that, that that's the key to this to develop these data plane connections. Um, awesome. So I think that we've got some in progress things related to SROV. Um, the guidelines for extending NSM from Dunehammer, I need to go find out why that's hanging out in review. Um, it may just have gone stale. Um, is there anything else that folks want to touch on while we're reviewing sort of the, the, the Kanban board? All right, cool. Anything else that folks want to talk about? We're sort of running off the end of the agenda. We still have a little bit of time here at the end. Uh, but I'm inclined to yield it back if folks are good. All right, thank you guys. Much appreciated. Talk to you next week. Yeah, bye everybody. Take care.